tests out of us. Okay, uh, so I'm believing God this evening. I'm not going to be sharing big grave like, like daddy, you know. I'm not going to be sharing big grave. I'm just going to be sharing with you some of the things that the Lord has been um, speaking with me in this season. Um, actually, I was not supposed to take this particular teaching. It was one of the pastors that was supposed to take it. But I think at the last minute, pastor changed his mind that I should just share with the house some of the things that the Lord has been um, laying on my heart. Um, first of all, I want to appreciate all our pastors, all our associate pastors, Pastor Friday, Pastor CG, Pastor Dyer, Pastor GP, Pastor Lissimus, all our health CLTs, all our um, unit leaders, our KCC coordinators, thank you for all that you do. And also for you, that you are seated here, can you appreciate yourself? And then, uh, the last but not the least, also I want to appreciate our senior pastor. I want to thank him for his labor. Um, I know currently he's in Lori ministering. He ministered this morning. And then um, I think, I'm not sure if he'll be ministering this evening, but I want to appreciate him for um, his labor. You know, this... Um, Teaching, um, daily teaching, sincerely, is not easy. Um, you know, once it comes on Wednesday, tomorrow, um, I'm not sure if he's going to be teaching, but likely he might be teaching. Thursday, will be teaching. Friday, we have um, outreach in, in UI. He'll be teaching on Friday, be teaching on Saturday, and he'll be teaching on Sunday. I don't envy him, but the Lord is his strength. So can we appreciate him once again for the labor? You know? How many of you have been enjoying this pre-conference teaching? It's really been a wonderful time. So this evening, I'll just be sharing some of the things that um, the Lord has been um, speaking to me in this season. Um, I've really been looking, for, I've, I've, I've been looking forward towards um, Image and Glory Conference. And um, I know once we started this daily teaching, you know, there was a word that came that talked to us about the fact that we shouldn't wait till Image and Glory Conference, that even in this pre-conference, the Lord will be visiting us. And that if you are able to go through this uh, pre-conference very well, that, you know, there are certain blessings that the Lord has actually put in place for us. Um, so my heart has really been very open uh, more than ever before um, about this um, pre-conference prayers um, and as well as the teachings. You know, sometimes, and I'm going to be trying as much as possible to be very practical, you know, sometimes um, based on the fact that maybe you've worked all day and then you come to church, you might not be at the best, in quotes, the best of your state, you know, to really... Um, engage in prayers and then also to engage in the word because sometimes your mind is also tired not just only your mind your body is tired so but um, I believe it's a season whereby we would need to fight against all odds to ensure that you are able to receive everything that the Lord has for so even for me as a person I had to um, be determined in my heart that no matter what um, stress, no matter what exertion, mental exertion I've gone through throughout the day, I have to make the best use of the this prayer time and um, this um, the pre-conference teachings. So I think it was um, it was um, last week, um, and probably last week, th that Thursday or Friday. So in the morning, I woke up and um, I was praying, and in my heart, my Prayer, prayer, you know, I think so, a series of things that happened maybe two or three days before then. And um, I found my, I was a little bit disturbed about a number of things. And um, um, those things actually got my heart a bit disturbed. And I was so, at a point, I began to talk to the Lord that, um, some of that, you know, there's a way in which certain things get to you. And then there's a way in which, you know, that when those things get to you, they, they kind of serve as distractions. And so I was praying to the Lord and I was talking to the Lord that day in the morning that I want to come to a place whereby I am totally consumed, you know, um, with all of his will, talking about his visions, you know, um, 
overshadowing my heart, you know, and not giving room to be um, distracted by other things, you know, that happens around. So I started praying. So um, I was praying to, so for a few days like that, I've been praying like that. And then um, I started also asking the Lord that God, I want to love you more. I want a more intimate a more intimate and real, a, a, I don't want to use the word reality, but there was something where I had, but the way I could pray was, Lord, I want to know you more. I want to love you more. I want some kind of intimate and deep relationship with you and all that. And then in my heart, all of a sudden, I, just, I was just like, God, you know, I'd always prayed this prayer that, um, you know, I was telling myself, you know, it was not, it was more like, I was laughing at myself. And I said, if um, they should, um, you should measure if it was by tears that once one enters into the things you desire by God that I've entered into all of these things many years ago. So, so I'm just talking to God, saying, ah, God, I don't cry. I don't cry tired. That if I, even my eyes now, don't they, don't they, you know, say, you, this guy, they cried. I said, ah, I know, as I was, you know, it was more like, you know, jokingly, I was just, I was praying, but I, I was thinking, but just trying to express my heart to God then. All of a sudden, I heard the Lord speaking to my head clearly. And, and I was asking that, God, how can I really want to love? I really want to, I really want to know you. That, you know, I know that there is more to you than all of this. I really, really want to know you. I not just only really want to know you. I want to be consumed by you. I know how other things could consume me. I want to be consumed by you. And I was asking, but God, how, how? I know it's not... I know the tears are good, but I know I've, at least from all these years, I know that it is not by just by just crying and just saying, God, bring me closer. I know it's I know it's more than that. And then all of a sudden I heard the Lord speaking to me and he began to show me. And he said, If you want that it is my desire that, that those prayers, that it is my desire that those prayers be fulfilled. But you cannot love me if you don't love my doctrine. And I wrote it down. I said, you cannot love me. You cannot say you love me outside my doctrine. So I read some of the things I wrote then exactly how, how those things got to my heart. I said, you cannot love me the way, you cannot love me outside my, my doctrine. She said, you cannot see my visions. You cannot understand my desire, you cannot know my heart, you cannot know my purpose, I cannot be your reality outside my doctrine. And so I wrote those things down and then, you know, and the Lord began to bring a whole lot of scriptures and um, I began to, and I began to have, I'd always known, but, you know, I began to have like a clearer understanding um, so I began to see that, and your pastor also said, was it on um, Sunday, when he said that you cannot love God outside his structure, as in outside his word. That, you know, so, 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 that, you know, so there's this feeling, you know, and that sometimes we have in the place of prayer that we want to love God. And loving God, you know, that, that money was like someone shattering my some of the things I'd always had known, but you know, somewhere, some, someone shattering certain perspective that, you know, loving me is not just emotional. That loving God is not just an emotional thing. Um, it's good to express emotions, cry and all that, but that loving God becomes, you know, sometimes when we think about intimacy with God, there's a way, there's a way our mind, our mind, our kind of mind will still process those things. And you no, know, the Lord was making me to say that it is not, it is beyond that. That you could start that way. But it is not, it is not all of that. That knowing the Lord, coming to love the Lord, coming to be consumed with his visions, all of those things are not outside the doctrine outside the communication of his doctrine. Outside, and okay, maybe for people who might do sometimes doctrine, when you hear doctrine, you look somewhere, because I say the word, outside his word, outside him communicating his word to us. You know, I'm just, I'm just believing God for utterance this evening. He said, you can't know, 
He said, you can't know me outside my word. And you can't say you love me if you don't love my word. And, you know, when we say um, we love the Lord, I love the word, um, the Lord now began to break it down to me practically in ways to show that you don't really love the word the way you should, the way that will bring you into the things that you desire. So, the Lord actually, one of the things I, I know and which um, it became, became more, more um, that became, how I put it, that was, that became a strong, it became a stronger impression in my heart was that the Lord communicates his visions, his heart, his purpose, his desires through preaching. You know, it became very, the, the gravity of it, you know, don't, don't, man, I'm praying that I'll be able to pass that to every one of us. You know, I, saw, I just saw the gravity of when God wants to communicate his heart. I know you cannot say you are in love with someone when you don't touch his heart. So when God wants to communicate his heart, his desires, his pleasures, things that really touch him, you know, when, it's not going to be just by God, just God could sit down and tell you certain things, but it is beyond that. God actually communicates those things through the preaching, preaching of his word, the doctrine, you know, communicating what his life, his vision, things about him. Those things, they are beyond things that um, we can just get by just sitting down, you know, studying and all of that is good. But I just began to see that a major way through which God communicates those things to us is through preaching. And we can't get to know him outside that. As in, if you take that away, it will be really be very difficult for us to truly know the Lord. You know, Pastor Nimos Moss was praying a prayer today that so that you know, at the end of the day, you know, feel scammed. You know, reason is just, just you know, you know that maybe in, in, now you can feel, oh, I've, I know the Lord. I, because God showed you a particular dimension about himself and you feel that's all about the Lord. And then maybe in another generation, when you now look back, they now find out that, ah, Omo, what I call knowing the Lord is really not knowing the Lord. You know, just like those guys that ate, and they said they, ate, they sat and ate with the Lord. And then in the New Testament, we heard the son saying that nobody has seen the Lord. So what happened to them then, you know? So what happened that they did not see the true God? Yeah. That was what happened. They didn't see the true God, you know? So, so there, there, there is a, a, a coming to know the true God is, is actually going to come through the Lord teaching us himself. And that's why I said in this saying that there was a time that Israel was without the true God because there, were what, there was what? No teaching priests. Those teaching priests were supposed to communicate things about him. By communicating those things about him was going to bring them into the knowledge of the true God. So, it says, so now for a long season, Israel had been without the word true God. And what? Without a teaching priest and without the law. That law can, can also say the law is actually the doctrine. So there was no teaching priest to teach them the doctrine. And because there was nobody to teach them those doctrines, what happened? They could not find what? The true God. So it's not as if they did not have a God, but they could not come into understanding of the true God. So I found out that coming into understanding of the true God, we cannot remove the place of doctrine and the place of a teaching priest. I hope you are following me. So it is very important because I want us to, I want us to see the gravity because I'm going, to, I'm going to go into the next phase, but I want us to see the gravity. So there's no way we can come into understanding. Into, and you know, when it comes to the issue of love, you know, I want us to see loving God beyond emotions and all that. You know, there's a concept, even in the church out there, where people that even preach intimacy, you know, we have some people that what they preach is just intimacy, loving the Lord, knowing the Lord. But many of them is not even based on some of these things. I had also been there. You know, in school days, when you talk about intimacy, and you know, there's just a concept about, oh, being intimate with the Lord, and all that. But it is, <laughs> all of those things are not, you know, they are not, they are not true. We could start from that. 
But you know, you can't talk about true intimacy outside knowing the true God. And you know, you cannot know that true God except his doctrine, except his laws are what? Communicated. And also that, so that, that brings me to the point. So if you don't love the doctrine, you don't love the Lord. You understand? Because the only way in which you can know him, you cannot love someone you don't know. So the only way you can come to know him, to understand him, to understand his visions, to understand his desire, to understand what he wants, you cannot come to know all those things if the Lord himself doesn't teach you those things. And he may not come down in your room to teach you many times. He actually gives those dispensation, you know, and that's grace to communicate in, you know, to people. You know, just like Jesus, you know, you, 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 you used a scripture when you were praying, you said, um, he said that it is Jesus that is the son that declares the father. So there is always, so when it comes to declaring, to making some, making a person, when it comes to the Godhead, there is always a, an office that is raised to make that declaration. And we cannot know if we don't embrace that office and everything that is proceeding from that office. So that's why, you know, in the time when Paul came, before Paul came, that dispensation of grace was, was hidden. Nobody knew it. Nobody knew that it was even in the heart of the Lord for the Gentiles to be partakers of salvation. Nobody knew it was hidden, but it was something in the heart of the Lord. You know, it took someone coming. You know, how, how did the Lord make it known? He had to, you know, he said, he said when, you, when you read my teachings, you can understand my knowledge. And what is that knowledge? That knowledge is the mystery, that thing that has been hidden in God. So God actually gives people those grace to make certain things about him known. So if those things are now being dispensed and you don't love that thing, you don't love the Lord. You don't love the Lord. So, so we cannot say we love the Lord if we don't love the communication of his laws. So one way to know that you really love the Lord, one litmus test to know that you truly love the Lord is to check how much do you love his laws? How much do you love his word? How much do you love the doctrine? I say, yes, I love the word. I love the word. Now, we're not going to break it. How do you love it? How, that, that loving, we need to break out some, in the, break down some indices to show if we truly love the word. Amen. Are you following me? So, I've established that we cannot, you know, you cannot know him outside preaching. We cannot say we love him if we don't know him. And for us to know him, his things needs to be what? Communicated to us. You know, you will see, and when God wants to Communicate. I see when you say God communicates, God speaking to us. I want you to see it beyond um, God telling you, okay, um, some of the normal days today, uh, don't go out today. Oh yeah, uh, do don't do this, don't do that. It's 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 well. That is that is some aspect, but it is also more than that. It also comes to loving the visions of God. Say the visions of God. Because so you cannot say that you love the Lord if you don't love his vision. So what do I mean by his vision? His vision means that the Lord's passion. You know, what the Lord wants, the pleasure of the Father. So for example, I am building a house. That is my passion. That is what I want to do. And then you say you love me. You are not interested in what I am building. You know, I'm talking about the building and you are just like, you, when I'm talking about it, you don't, you don't, you're just flat. You're not excited. You're not asking, how is it going? What is happening? And you just come say, ah, I love you very much. Oh. I love you very much. Oh. I love you. Even cry, just the way I will cry. I love you very much. Oh. With all of my heart, I love you dearly. And then the things I am interested in, you have no interest in them. Can you truly say that you love me? Can you truly say that you love me? Yeah, so that is, so sometimes, you know, sometimes some of our 
I want just want to because some of our reactions to some of the things that the Lord communicates with us. So sometimes when there are certain things that are being communicated through preaching, if you can believe by Bobisti, Bolorobisti, and yes, on Kanto, Yewato, you don't see it as in, you know, issues about understanding times and season. You know, how is your checkout? How do you react to such preachings? Let's be very practical. How do you react to them? But when they talk about things that affect your natural, maybe, you know, sometimes messages just switch to certain things, work, marriage, you know, you come alive. But when it comes to things about understanding God's time, God's agenda, you know, you just, I just flat. In fact, sometimes you will say, I don't understand. And then we just switch off. What I'm not trying to say is that having interest in the Lord's passion, in the things that are God's vision concerning his times and his season, is when you love those, it's also an indication that what you love the Lord. You must have interest in those things. Tell me, you must have interest in those things. So when they are talking about those things, they are breaking seal, okay, but seal is shaking, all right? All this seal, all this everlasting life, all this everlasting gospel. What, what, what is the meaning of all these things? You can even say, God, it's my nature you should deal with. You know, even sometimes we have those things. It's nature, deal with this infirmity is what I want you to deal with. All those understanding, eternal, everlasting, beast, seal, I'll be understanding. Just deal with this infirmity. So, loving even the visions, the desires of God, coming to want to know, understanding the times and seasons, are also indication of a love for the Lord. So, to show you that loving the Lord is not just something emotional, you know, or abstract. There are certain indices that we must be able to measure if we truly do what, if we truly love the Lord. And you see, like I said, we cannot understand his visions, his purpose, his plans, and all of these things if those things are not well communicated to us. You saw said concerning Uzziah, I said, and Uzziah sought the Lord. I believe that that seeking the Lord was out of a love and a desire to know the Lord. He said he sought the Lord in the days of Zechariah, who had what understanding in what? In the visions of God. So there was a man, Zachariah, who had understanding, who knew God's purpose, who knew, God, who knew God's mind, who knew God's laws, who had God's commandment. So Uzziah, his love, one of the ways of expressing his love is to come to know that understanding by going through what the person that had what that understanding. So I'm sure what you would have been doing would have been asking him questions about understanding that, okay, what is, the, what, what is the Lord saying, you know? So he said, and he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had what? Understanding. What I'm trying to say is that if you don't love understanding, you don't love God. Because it is, a, it is one of the vehicles through which God visions. I know when I talk about visions, it's not, oh, I saw a vision. No, that's not. God visions is, what are God's purposes? God's desire, God's plan, you know? So he sought God's commandment, so God's desire, you know? And all these things are communicated, what? True doctrine. Say true doctrine. So Uzziah was a guy that actually loved doctrine. He loved the Lord. And that, that actually showed in his words, in his disposition, you know, to... The, to, the, to the dispensation through which that understanding could be what? Administered. Amen. Are you following me? So, so like I said, so we need to, so I, I believe Zechariah was, the, was their own teaching priest in that day that was communicating the laws, you know, um, of the Lord. And you know, was it on Sunday that pastor, I don't know if it was Sunday or Thursday, that pastor was teaching us and he said, was teaching us and he was talking to us, also making us to see definition of love. That if you have my commandments and what? 
So even before you can keep, you need to first of all do what? Have. So that's the first thing you need to first of all say. He who has my commandments. One, condition one. And then keeps them. Condition two. It is he who what? So definition of love. So you can see that definition of loving the Lord is not outside understanding his commandments. So you must understand his commandments, his doctrines, and then walk in them. That is, keep them. That is, do them. It is when these two things are in place that we can say that we truly love them. So cry from today to tomorrow. If you don't have understanding, you cannot love the Lord as you ought to. I say, I put that command there. As you do what? As you ought to. So he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who does what loves me. So how do we have commandments? So that is the first step. We need to actually have commandments so that we can now be able to do what? Keep them. Because now these two things are the indices of what? Our love for the Lord. So how do you have them? So like I've, I've, like I've mentioned, so we, have, we have those under, on that understanding of those commandments by them being preached to us. By understanding being given what? To us. Let's look at Matthew, Mark chapter 4. Verse 23, Pastor Nisimus, when he was just said, this pastor has preached all the things I want to talk about. To. Matthew 4, 23 said, if anyone has ears to hear, let him do what? So what is he going to hear? He's going to hear doctrine. He's going to hear what the Spirit is saying. He's going to hear what the Lord is communicating. So, we're going to hear what the Lord is wanting us to know about him, about his plans, about his purpose, about his pleasure. So he said, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Then he said to them, take heed what you hear. That is, taking heed means that you must respond. It's not just take heed, he's responding. He said, with the same measure you use. So, when we come to, so when we come like this, we all come with different measures. Say different measures. Different measures of receiving those commandments or receiving doctrine or receiving the visions of God. Yeah. Said with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you and to you who hear more will be given. So it is the measure of hearing. Because you see that I said, with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. So what will be measured to you is more hearing, more understanding. So when we come, when we come together like this, the Lord, you know, when everyone was preaching on Sunday, I, just, I saw some that thing really stuck to man. And he was saying something, said that, you know, God, I'm using my own word, the way it came, said, God from the divine realm, he communicates things and it flows. It flows to us, you know. Those things come. You know, I was talking about grace, how grace will become truth, you know, how truth will become um, the, and te testament, I think. We become covenant, then from covenant to testament to testimony, you become a witness and all that. He said, then how to me, he said, but those things, when they forget like a river, he said, when it comes to you, he said, you are far. He said, it comes to you. He said, when it comes to you, what that thing is supposed to do is not to be bringing you. And also, no, as I was just speaking, I just saw like a graphic, that picture really imprinted in my heart. And so when we come, you know, and what, what I saw was that, so when God wants to pass those things, he passes them through preaching, yeah. through the word. You know, I just saw, you know, once I just saw, I just saw it that those things, as, they are, as God is communicating, understanding, you know, as we come, you no, know, I just, as it was a, I don't know how to say, but it was a picture that was very strong in my, I saw it in a very different way. I saw each time we come and the Lord is communicating to us, things are being released. It's like a river flowing. Once I am able to receive it, and in terms of receiving it, it means that I am hearing, and then it's not because I just sit down and my eyes are opened. As in, I have come, my whole spirit is engulfing that thing. What happens to me is that I receive grace to journey closer. 
So I, I saw preaching in a whole different way entirely. That it is God. You know, so, so it says, it says the dimension you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who now hear what will happen, more will be what given. So each time we come, you know, what I'm trying to say is that I want us to have an attitude in this season. There's an attitude I want us to have when we come to here. To know that that attitude is a reflection of one, your love for the Lord. And it also determines how much you can walk with the Lord. And when I mean about walk with the Lord, what we call that true intimate walk with the Lord. We can't get it outside those things. Next verse. Say, for whoever has, to him, what would not happen? More will be given. But whoever does not have, even that, what he has, whatever little you feel you have, it will be what taken from you. So, one of the ways we'll, we will come to have commandments, that we'll come to have understanding is that we must hear. Tell your neighbor, say we must hear. I see hearing is not just sitting down. I'm just hearing. When it comes to, there is a posture to hearing. Tell your neighbor, say there is a posture to hearing. There's a posture to hearing. So you can actually be coming to church for years and you're not hearing because of a wrong posture, a wrong attitude. And those are the things you'll be looking at this evening. He said, you, we, need to, we need to hear. That hearing also, he that, that have, he that heart. You no, know, he said, he that art and hear. You no, know, Revelation said, he that art and hear. Let him do what? Hear that which the Spirit is saying. So you might have a hear that is not hearing. That's why Proverbs Church said, said, it said, and hearing hear. It did not say a and hear. He eh? said what? And hearing hear. So there can be an hear that is not hearing. So he said, and hearing the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made what both of them. So because seeing, which is understanding, is actually tied to what? Hearing. So that's why when somebody is telling you something, say, hey, I see, I see. But the person is talking to you, what is the meaning of I see? I understand. So understanding comes by what? Yeah. I can hear you. Understanding comes by what? Yeah. Pray. So you must have hearing. So if it's one of the things you must be praying for to God constantly, is for what? An hearing ear. Yeah, an ear that can hear and come into what? Understanding. And one of the ways that we can one of the ways we can come into hearing is by hunger. Say hunger. Let's look at Isaiah 55 verse 1. So I believe that that he that hearts, that he that hearts is that eagerness to hear. That's the way I interpret that. It, it, it that has, as in you have that posture that can receive. He said, oh, everyone who tests, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and what? Eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. So what do you use to buy? You buy with your thirst, with your hunger, and with your desire. So, each time you come into the Lord's presence and this is not there, you cannot buy. That is your purchasing power in the Spirit. Your test and your hunger, your desire for the Word is your purchasing power of understanding. That is what you use to buy, to hear understanding. Amen. So we need to have, let's look at Psalm 133, 138, verse 2 to 4. Okay, before we go there, I want us to check Romans 10, 14 to 15. How then 
just to emphasize the issue of, because the, the, the hearing is actually hearing of that which is being communicated. So let's see, he said, how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not what heard? And how shall they hear without what? Can you read it again? How shall they hear what? Without a preacher. So the word has to be preached for us to hear. So for us now, so even when the word is not being preached, there's an attitude to hearing. There is what is called what? An hearing hair. And so one of the things that magnifies that hearing hair is our hunger. Our hunger is one of our pots. So even when there is a preacher, so the word can be preached and yet we are not hearing. And you know, I've, I've thought the word hearing means coming into what? Understanding. So one of the things that helps us to come to the place of hearing here is our hunger, our desire for the word, our love for doctrine, our love for the word. And this will also reflect in how we pay attention. Say how we pay attention. Let's look at Proverbs 4, 20 to 23. Proverbs 4, 20 to 23. My son, give what? I can What is happening? My son, do what? Then what should I have? Incline your ears to my saying. So there is a posture. Say there is a posture for hearing. The first posture. I know we've talked about hunger. Another thing you must have is attention. Say attention. Hey, I can't hear you say attention. attention. So when the word is coming, you must have a desire for attention. So not just, oh, I want to, I love understanding. I want to come into an understanding. One of the ways it will show that hunger, the way we will know that hunger is there is that you will pay. You will give what, you know, some providers will say pay. It is a price. You now when we're talking about come buy, Say so you tell said that you say come buy without money. So your attention is also one of your purchasing power. Tell your neighbor, say it's a purchasing power. Attention. How much attention to, do you give to the world when the word is being preached? How much attention? Not just the things that the Lord began to to arm I know we, you know we all have different, we have different dealings, we have different things that the Lord um but the Lord will be dealing with us practical things, you know. I had my own practical example of things God began to point at that by doing this, by doing this, by doing this, you are not paying attention enough. These are things that are not making you attentive. Sometimes when you do this, you lose certain words, certain sentences. So imagine when Reverend was saying that, see that picture that I described to you, it's something that was, I know how God spoke, it was something that was in Peter, but I know that, for years, that thing cannot leave me. So imagine when Reverend was that particular, that particular description, that particular, you know, in the preaching, there are different things that preachers talk. So imagine when, you know, that's one of the things I was saying. Imagine when Reverend was saying that thing. Maybe then uh, my mind wandered away and I did not really capture it. Or maybe at that time, maybe I went to gist or something. How many of you know that I've missed that? That is what happens to us many times. When we come to say message is going on, and we just, something just happened, and you just lose attention. It might even be legitimate things. And just lose attention, just think, I will join the message. You don't know at that particular time what, maybe there is a particular thing that God wants to communicate to you that will make a particular impression in your heart, that will give you, because that thing was an understanding to me. So that was understanding being ministered to me by hearing that thing. So many times, you know, when we come into God's presence, even the way we get distracted, you know, you go and receive one phone call, you go and do something, and something is happening, you just go. Sometimes you even go and chill outside, you say your head is hot, you want to chill under the tent. You know, all of those things that looks a little bit unharmful. But they are not what 
paying what attention. What does it mean to pay attention? Can you help me look for the dictionary? Well, let's even look at it. What does it mean to literally? Pay? Is there a way you can check the dictionary? Or if somebody can do that for me, what does it mean to pay attention? What does it mean to pay attention to my words? What does it mean to pay? What is the meaning of paying attention? What does it entail? To take notice of something. Applying what? The mind to something. Sorry? Think about something. So when the word is going on, you must do what? Apply, say, apply your mind. So sometimes when you're your mind will just wonder, who my son of poor. As you are done, you are thinking of transport fare to go to work tomorrow. You are thinking of something to do at work. That happens to me at times. Maybe, I, maybe I've been writing a research paper before coming to work. Then right there in the job, something just, something just comes. I'm trying to process it. I'm trying to do it. Sometimes I'm even trying to just put it down. At that time, you have lost track of what is coming. Say to watch, to listen to, or think about something or someone what carefully or with what interest. So this must be our attitude when preaching is doing what going on. Say pay attention. <laughs> Say my son, give what attention to my words. So one of the ways to notice that you will do what. Incline by paying attention is you know what we say you should incline that means your tongue is any inclination that means that naturally our ears are not inclined so that means that you have to consciously now do what to what the sayings and tune yourself you know it's like when you are tuning radio to pick a particular so you have to so when you come to the word. Even when they are saying it, and as I say, the thing go here, you have to tell yourself that see, you need to pay attention. You need to put your mind. You need to consciously want to hear, carefully listen to the. So no, because some of us I say, when pastor goes to all this beast, beast thing, you just, you just love that. What go here, me more to show me down. You know, just like, at the party, cash fellowship after fellowship. That is not a sign of love. You know, it's the truth. You can't actually say you love someone and not pay attention to that person. Say, I love you, I love you. And the person is talking to you, I love you. The person is talking to you, say, I love you. I love you. I even cry, I love you, I love you. And the person is trying to talk to you. The person is talking to you and then you are doing something. My husband sometimes used to fight with me about that. Maybe it's not about his body. My husband will finish me with his body. So maybe he's saying something then maybe I want to Maybe I want to reply to something at work. Then he's talking, he's saying it. Maybe I'm just typing. I say, oh, book what's most I'm going to say, oh, boss, 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 oh, pay attention. Okay, if, okay, if, okay, okay. You say, I'm listening. Okay, 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 have you heard those things? Have you said, okay, I'm listening. 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 That you can't really say you are hearing when you don't pay what attention. And then someone, someone says, I can't even recall. You know, we used to say something when, when we are assessing our patients for cognitive impairment. We say, what that you don't pay attention to, you cannot recall. Because when we are assessing cognitive function, we want to assess memory, how you are able to recall things. That's the first thing we would do. We usually check for attention and concentration. There's a way... We assess that for attention and concentration. So once, so if, if I know that you did not, you did not sense as to them, maybe just, they're just writing what you learn. Once you present, you say, attention and concentration is poor. Then, uh, memory. You're not telling me that memory is uh, intact, everything is like, is it like you have done no duro? Because there is no way, if somebody has poor attention and concentration, there's no way to know it will affect recall. As in, you cannot recall 
what you did not pay attention to. So they say you say you do the, you do the your attention, which is immediate, you call it immediate registration. You do the person is not paying attention, he's not registering it immediately. You will not be able to recall that thing when you need it. So don't say ah, you have forgotten messages. What they even preach that is Tuesday, you cannot remember. The problem starts from the place of attention. How much attention did you give when the word was what is coming? How much attention? She so said, my son, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to what I say. So pay attention. So we must. So you must be. So even when, even when what is going on, I want to go and poop. You will run and you don't want to miss too much. You need to go and do something. You will, you know, that's the that attitude. You know, you, that is why sometimes I'm hangry. When uh, something is coming, somebody is coming, you're already late, oh, and then the person is still showing you the game. Just like, don't you know that you are missing something? Don't you don't understand? Don't you know that you are missing? So it's like going for a lecture. They want to teach you a very difficult topic, and then you walk late into the class. You already know that you have missed a portion. It will be difficult for you to flow into it. And it starts from prayer to worship. Yeah. I was going to get there. All of those things, preparation of our prayers, pre, pre-word prayers, worship, all of those things are preparations to, in, now after that, you need to incline your ears. There are things that programs your hair, that primes your hair to hear. They're like primers. There are things that will prime you up. So you know why you want to incline is tuning. There are things that fine-tunes your spirit, you know, to be able to receive the frequency that is coming from heaven. Amen. Amen. So say pay attention. And we must avoid distractions as well. Say avoid distractions. Let's look at Psalm 119 verse 37. Psalm 119 verse 37. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things. Give me the King James Version. So there are things that are turn away my eyes from beholding what vanity and quicken me what in thy way. So that you know, all those vanities are things that cause distraction. There are so many vanities, you know, like tapping. I'm doing tapping during service. Say worthless things. Worthless, you feel like you can tell me, oh, it's not worthless, it is money. But I'm telling you, it's worthless in comparison to the things of glory. Yes, it can work a while on this earth. But when we compare it with the things of glory that are being preached, oh man, it is what? Worthless. You should, there should, should not be any, any reason for what? Comparison. So he says, turn away my eyes from vanity and quicken down me in thy way. So these are distractions. These are things that, you know, some d- things, any form of distraction, things that just distract you. So sometimes some distraction, they'll just sit through your heart before you know it. Even unnecessarily moving around, noise and all of these things, they are distractions. They just you know, something is coming. You know, and you just know, you know, is it Elijah or Elisha now? When he was going to go, he thought, he said, if you can see me at that time, at that particular time, when I am going to be taken away. So imagine, at, you know, at that time, it was going to be a split of seconds. Imagine at that time, he ignored the phone call. I'm not trying to say our own realities now. You know, let's say it was in our own time. You know, these are our distractions. Uh-huh. Or maybe it's wee-wee. You want to quickly go and wee-wee. Then you now wee-wee there. Instead of walking briskly, then you know what it is, and then you call me, what the, I wonder, what's it law? So this is, sometimes we miss our moments of epiphany. We miss those moments by distractions. And the enemy sets those distractions. God began to show me some of my own moments of distraction. And I began to repent. And I said, God, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me to overcome some of these distractions. So you must hunger for the word 
We must pay attention. We must avoid distraction. And the last, the, one of the other things I want us to look at is Isaiah 66, verse 2. Another posture of heart that we must have when the word is coming. For all those things my heart has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one will I look. This is the person I will pay at. This is the person the Lord will regard. This is the person the Lord will pay attention to. On him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and what trembles at my word. As in that attitude of trembling, that is an attitude of honor for the word. Say honor for the word. You know, it's that. So, Jesus is, imagine your boss is coming. You know, when your boss is coming, maybe a big dignitary is coming. You know, the way you will do. You know, you see people, everybody, it's not because he's a wicked person, but you know, that, that thing is just reverence. I don't know how, you know, everybody, everybody just packages themselves. You know, it's not because he's going to, you know, if our natural boss, you no, know, just, it's just also part of what? Honor and reverence. That's what the Lord is saying. That, when the word is coming, these are the people the Lord will pay attention to. The people that the Lord will respond to. And one of them will respond to is by giving understanding. Is people who do what trembles at my word. As in that, that posture of heart that trembles, that gives a whole lot of honor and reverence for God's word. One of the ways you will know you reverence God's word, that word will not be coming and you'll be outside gisting. And that's when somebody that you want to tell something, that's when you remember. You know, even God had to be pointing to me some of those things as well. It's not part of reverence, of enough reverence. I know it is very easy for us to get familiar with the word because there is a lot of word. We hear oil in case you see, you hear. So there's a tendency for you to just be slack. I just say, bah, 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 case you see, you hear Tuesday, you hear Thursday. So, when there is, how many of you know that when food is plenty, people waste food? People will waste food. But when there is not enough, you will see how people will manage. You will not say anything. It will not burn. <laughs> food that is burning is because it is plenty. I'm not sure. Ah, I'm going to tell you about Joe. Ah, because they should eat a lot of rice. Jello fries, tea, Joe, no? Rice in your body. That can you met a level jagolo rice here, okay? Mama, you cook butter, Joe. You know that you cannot afford that you cannot afford a burnt offering in this one. Say tremble at my word. So I don't know. I don't know what that means to you. It means different things to all of us. But we must all allow the Holy Spirit to interpret what this means to us, to correct our attitude towards the word. How do you respond to you? What? How much honor? And reverence do you have for the word? How much, you must ask yourself, how much honor? How does it reflect? How can I honor God's word more when it is coming? How more can I reverence God's word more when it is coming? Amen. Amen. Let's look at Psalm 138, verse 2 to 4. Even the Lord, they said the Lord honors his word. More than his name. I will worship two words your holy temple, and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have what? Magnified your word above what? All your name. That's the Lord. So if the Lord himself magnifies his word more than all of his name, who are you not to reverence and honor that word? May the Lord help us. So we must honor the word. We must not despise the word. We must reverence. We must. And you see, there are, like I, like I wrote here, I said prayer and worship. I know God communicates through prayers, through worship, but also there are, there are systems also put as part of our ascension pro process to help prepare our hearts to receive God's word. And so you must give them equal attention. Say equal attention. I was reading this scripture this morning, Daniel 7, 10, and you know, I, I was just wondering, you just see sometimes um, 
issue of worship. How worship prepares the way for the world. It said, and a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. Then what? The court was seated. And what? The books were opened. So you see ministrations to the Lord. So that's why sometimes some of you, when they now preach, you say you do not understand. Koyemi, koyemi, koyemi. When they're doing prayer, pre, uh, pre, uh, when they're doing, pre, no, not preparing prayer, I'm even talking about service. Yeah. When they're doing, no, I don't want to call it opening prayer. Prayer sessions. You, you feel that service has not started. Then you're still doing your makeup or arranging your hair. When they start worship, say, uh, worship, won't she worship, uh, won't she, she worship, you can't be like, what cook with me? Worship, won't she worship, go sick, can't do she. But I worship, and she break my pastor to go, okay. Why is she going to go to church? We now say that the books are, why would the books not be closed? The books will be closed. So some of those things, you will see them, even in those days when they are going to Jerusalem, all those songs of ascension in Psalms, they were songs they sang as they were going towards the temple. So there's a way to ascend. You know that when Sheba came, he, one of the things I said, he saw the manner of what? The ascension. So all of those things are like things culminating. Acts prepared in prayer, in worship. Then it makes, it grants you access when the word is coming. So our attitude towards prayers, our attitude towards worship, all of those things must change. Say it must change. It must change. It's got to change. And so prayer, oh, prayer is not, prayers is not one of the programs that has to be fulfilled when we come to service. It is one of the processes. You know, it's like if you go to um, a court, court, before they even do whatever, you know, there are things that are processing. All of those things are culmination. Culmination things, it's a process that culminates into one another. So, no, 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 no problem. I'm at the church. I'm at the church before worship. I'm at the church before worship. See, our attitudes must change. You know, why? I, I, saw, I saw something also very important. Last month, I was, I was studying the book of Matthew and I, I was just reading, was, I was just reading through Matthew and then I noticed two things and I wrote it. I've, had, I've been looking forward to a time when I was going to talk to the church about worship because sometimes I see people's attitude towards worship and I'm like, with this attitude, we won't be able to, we won't be able to get certain things in the spirit. Let's look at Matthew chapter 8 verse 2. And behold, there came a leper and did what? And did what? Saying, e Lord, if thou will, thou can make me clean. What did he want? He want cleansing. But how did it, did it come? Worshiping. So there's something about worship that prepares. And so when he did that, let's read the verse three. There's verse three. Then Jesus put out his hand and taught him saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. So he came what? Worshiping. And after the worship, he now made his petition no. Let's look at Matthew 9. You know what I just said? Just, man, this is, this, is, this, is, this is profound. Now, when the, Matthew 9, 13. 18, rather. While he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and did what? Saying, my daughter has just died, but come. And lay your hand on her, and she will do what? Leave. So you see them, they come. It's an, it's an attitude. It's a posture. It's a posture, our hearts. You know, when we're talking about inclining our ears, one of the ways our ears get inclined to get understanding is that we must come with a posture of art of word worship. So that's why, you know, if you read Final Quest, Regina was talking about when they began to, that when he got to um, whatever, and they were not looking, was not viewing worship sessions on the heart. And I was seeing people 
worship in, that, in the midst of darkness. And angels were also viewing people. You know, the whole land was viewed as a dark place. And they saw people worshiping and singing and worshiping God. That was a very beautiful moment in worship. That at that time, he, he regretted all the time he was on earth. And he did not take part in worship very well. How many of you remember that place? Is this the final quest or the call? Final quest. It was beautiful that the angels, that the angels could sing more beautifully, but that, that the father was always, the father's heart was, you know, was excited. When they saw people, the, the, the people in the midst of their pain, in the midst of all the darkness, they were singing and worshipping. And at, at that moment, you now remember all the times they were doing worship on earth. That I did not do it very well. And it was hard that I regretted all those times. But we will not get to heaven before we start regretting those things. All those worship moments, those moments of worshiping and bringing praise to the Lord. However, going to do that worship, you must do it not as somebody that is being forced to worship. Tell neighbor, say, don't do it as somebody that is being forced to worship. Not some of the way you do worship is as if you are being forced. To worship the Lord. As in angrily, uninterested, just waiting for that moment to finish so that you can sit down. You know, it's like bringing an ill favored offering to the Lord. You know, when they're going to bring offering in the Old Testament, God gave them specification. He told them that the lamb must not have baby, he must not be blind, he must not be lame, he will give them, he must not have spots, he must not be having running nose, discharge. God gave them specifications of the kind of lamp that they must offer when they come into his presence. You know, we are not in the New Testament, so God will not be telling us we should bring lamp. But some of the things we offer to God as sacrifices are worship. And so when you are bringing it to God, don't bring something we should worship. You know, there's a place in Psalm that says, make his praise word glorious. Let's look at Psalm 66 verse 1. So when you are bringing worship, when you are giving praise, and when you are bringing praise and worship to the Lord, you must make it what? I can't hear you. Make it what? You must make his praise glorious. Let me look for that. Yes. Say, make a joyful shout to God. All the head. Sing out. So you see some of you that don't like singing out. What did he say? Sing out. The honor of his name. Make his praise what? Make it glorious. Say, great is the Lord. And what? Greatly to be praised. So you don't praise him anyhow. You don't give him worship anyhow. You're not singing. They're not singing the song I like. I don't even know the song. The lyrics are too long. Make his praise glorious. Let's look at Psalm. I mean, we, 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 let's look at Second Samuel. The story of David. Second Samuel six fourteen to twenty two. You know, talk about Davidic praise. You know, Jesus, the Lord really loved David. David was a guy that was after the Lord. He had so much honor, so much reverence, so much consideration for the Lord. You will see David. David danced before the Lord with all his might. I'm talking about making his praise glorious. Danced with all his might and David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up. You can see they were bringing up the ark of the Lord. So you can see him bring the, the, the manner in which they brought the ark. And that ark of the Lord talks about God's presence. So we can see the manner in which they brought the ark up. It was with what shouting and with the sound of trumpet, with praise, with dancing. Verse, now the ark of the Lord came into the city of David. Mitchell, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and wailing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. Some of you will see people praising, maybe expressing themselves before the Lord. You know, she lay by that she wants to you. You are like Milka. I know what happened to Milka. She was barren all her life. Say, make his praise glorious. Some of you, the only place where you dance in your life is only your one bear. Don't dance. You are too big. You'll be forming for the Lord. You can't. So they said, David just, just said it was before the Lord. Before the Lord. Say, before the Lord. 
So our praise, our worship, all of these things are what? Before the Lord. It's our own manner of bringing up the presence of God. With shouts of joy, singing out, you know, singing now, praising, clapping. Out. They will say in church, clap hands. Like these people will not clap. Clap your hands, all you people. People on Sunday, I don't know, was this, last, this Sunday, last Sunday? Somebody was going to say, people should clap. People clap maybe for one minute after that they stopped. Clap hands. Raise up your hands to the Lord. So some of us, we cannot receive instruction. When, they, when the person didn't worship or somebody prays, say, lift up your hands and worship the Lord, you don't answer. How does the Holy Spirit, how do you want to receive instruction of the Spirit? He let talk, but I talk clear. But look, microphone. No, we've not, you've not trained your heart to receive instructions. Raise up, come on, lift up your hands and worship the Lord. Can we stand up on our feet and worship the Lord? That's why your bum bum will glue to the chair. Some people don't even stand up during worship. I have a problem with that, personally. I have a problem. I just feel it is not a sign of reverence. I, I, I don't know, I might be wrong. But I just, I was raised that way from a CSC church. And when you are doing, that worship is reverence to the Lord. And part of, it's just like, if a dignitary is coming, if it's a place of work, everybody stands up. You don't sit down. If you sit down, what would they, what would they count it that they feel that you are what? rude? They are disrespectful. No, it's just part of honor. I understand maybe if your leg is paining you or maybe sometimes you are weak. But when it has become your mannerism, some people is that mannerism. When they, are, they have an excuse, some people they say they are carrying baby. And I ask, carrying baby, does it prevent you from worshipping the Lord? Is it not the Lord that even gave you that baby? But I'm about to tell you, the leg, dear, see, if God's blessing has not been a reason, has not become a body. You know, I, I may be wrong, go, but you know, that's just, you know, there's some talents that are just culture. You know, it's just out of reverence. I know that times that maybe you are tired, maybe once in a while. But when it has become your attitude, you don't even say anything that doing what she go call joko. She will observe goa. Observation. You don't say, no, I've understood you want to have I just wonder, how do you really want to break into light? How do you really want to break into? You say, it is in my heart that I'm doing the worship. Say attitude. See, you say, oh, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with the voice of what? Triumph. So you make, we had done his worship. We shout. We dance, we clap, we use instruments. Using tambourine is not outdated. If I told my sister that I'm going to buy a bell, I like CSC worship with bell. I want to buy a bell, I want to give choir. I like, you know that bell? There's just something just tears in my spirit. You know, all of you, devotion in your house, they will pray bell in the morning. All those things, I say, make, you know, it's just, there's just something. You know, there's a, there's a, you know, there's even a place in sound that talks about tambourine. Can you help me look for that scripture? It talks about using instruments. So it's not just only keyboard, whatever, you know. There's nothing wrong if you have tambourine, bring your tambourine to church. Play the tambourine as in, it's your tambourine. Now I'm going to buy bell. I'll give them a choir to be, to be, to, to my funnies. So let them praise his name, what? In the dance. Can you see? Let them praise his name, what? In the dance. Let them sing praises unto him, what? With the timbrel. That's tambourine and harp. Sing praise them. As in just make his praise, what? Glorious. And you can say, oh, it's only, new, it's only Old Testament. It's not only Old Testament. Let's look at Ephesians 5.19. Ephesians 5.19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns, and what? Spiritual songs. Singing and what? Making what? Melody in your heart to the Lord. To make melody, good voices. Sing, part of the song, and just worship the Lord. Good melody from your heart. Let's look at um, 
James 5.13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him do what? Pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him do what? Sing songs. So tell neighbor, say sing. 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 Let's look at Psalm 47 verse 7. To know that singing is a thing of the heart. It must come from the heart. For God is the king. Psalm, no, that's not what I want. Psalm 57 verse 7. My heart is steadfast. Can you see? My heart is steadfast. Oh God, my heart is what says fast. So what will happen? I will sing and give praise. So when I see people, personally, that is me. I don't know, it might be wrong. But when I see people that they don't, they're not cheerful in praise, I feel there's something wrong with their hearts. There's something, I say, if you, there's no way you would think about, you think about light, you think about understanding. No, it's no, the scripture says sing with understanding. There's no way you have understanding that you'll not be, you not be a worshiper. That you'll not be singing praise to God. There will always be something. It's when understanding by scarce in your hearts, yeah, or my, or my wine, yeah, be generator before you sing, you know, before you worship. It will not be an expression coming from your heart. So my heart is steadfast, oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and do what? Give praise to our Lord. We must not lose sight of these things. So even if you now say all these things, I don't believe in everything you have said. You see? In City Gate Church, say in City Gate Church. When the scripture says, <laughs> you already know what I want to say. Every house has their own culture. So even if you say all these things, so you don't agree with them. We have our own culture in City Gate Church. In City Gate Church, we love the word. We reverence the word. And because of our love for the, to have the Lord's commandments and to do his commandments, we pay attention to the word. So if you are in our midst and you are not paying attention, you are distracting us, we have the right to call you to order. So if you are in church and you want telephone, if Osha comes to meet you, we have a right to do it because you are, you are working against the culture and the atmosphere of this house. If you are doing worship and we sit, you are always sitting down, we have the right under God to tell you to stand up. Because you are not following the culture in this. In city gate, in, I know there are some other places, people sit down during worship. But in city gate, our own culture, every house have their culture. How many of you believe that? Yeah. It's like in my house now, every Saturday morning, we eat moi moi. It is the culture of our house. You cannot come to my house on Saturday morning and say, me, oh, I don't eat moi moi, I don't eat ogi. Me, what I want to eat is Kilimanjaro rice. I will tell you no. That in this house, on Saturday morning, we do what? And ogi. But some people now, they've started changing it. I will not tell you what they are changing it to. They know themselves. So every house has its own culture. That's why I said we should teach people how they ought to behave. In the house of God, which is what? The ground and pillar of truth. It's part of our culture. Part of our culture is we make his praise glorious. Prayers and worship, they are part of our manner of ascension into the Lord's word presence. They are also part of our service. It is no less a service than the ministration of of the word. How many of you agree with me? I am declaring this so that it can ring into our hearts. Because you see, it is easy for a house to lose a culture. And it will start gradually. One person, two person, three person, four person. For example, I was sitting sit there somebody said, under the tent. Now, people under the tent, they don't like doing worship. Doing worship, all of them are always sitting down. He said, we don't want that culture. So that when everybody now begins to give, but they don't think that the culture is that every nursing mother does not do worship, but they do what? They sit down. 
That is, I'm saying it publicly. It is not, we refuse, I reject it by everything. It is not the culture of this house. And it will never be the culture of this house. Yeah. Our nursing mothers are vibrant. Yeah. The blessings of God make it rich and added no sorrow. Our nursing mothers are vibrant. They are active. They are fiery. They love the Lord. They love the word. They will pay attention. They will serve the Lord with all of their hearts. Because the blessings of God, a child is a blessing. And the blessing of God make it rich and had that no sorrow. And because the path of the just is like a shining light that does what? Shines brighter and brighter. So when you give back to children, your passion will not diminish. Your love for Jesus will not diminish. Your child will not be a distraction. That is the reality of this house. I declare it this evening. That is our reality. That is our culture. That is what we embrace. And that is our reality. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I bring light. I bring understanding. I bring light. I bring understanding. I bring light to you for you to make adjustment. I bring light so that you make adjustment. I bring understanding for you to align. I bring light for you to see reasons to align. I bring light for you to align. Adjust, 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 adjust. I want you to adjust. I want you to adjust. So I make it clear. I make it clear. I make it clear. I make it clear. I speak clearly. I speak clearly. I speak clearly in a clear terms. In a clear terms. Because I want you to adjust. Adjust quickly. Adjust quickly. Change quickly. Adjust quickly. Align quickly so that you will not miss my blessing. Align quickly so that you will not miss my blessing. Align quickly so that you will not miss a visitation. Align quickly so that you will not miss a visitation. Oh, see the Lord, a visitation is upon you. A visitation is upon you. A season of visitation is around a corner. A season of visitation is around a corner. Oh, I'm about to visit you. I'm about to visit you. Oh, and because of my mercy, I'm bringing this clear to you so that you will not miss out. So that because that attitude will make you miss me. That attitude will make you miss me. That attitude will not make you see me when I come around. So I'm speaking to you right now. I am speaking to you right now. I am telling you right now. So make adjustment. Make adjustment so that you'll be able to see Design me when I come. See you the Lord. Amen. May we not miss our visitation in Jesus' name. So in rounding up, I do not want, the last thing I want to say is that in rounding up, I do not want, you know, in this season where there'll be a lot of understanding, I know that um, pastor is going into the book of Revelations, Daniel, which for some are not, are not 
the familiar zones. I know in Revelation, you will not see wife, you will not see work, you will not see, I be, let us be realistic, you will not see job, you will not see some of those things that we can easily relate with. We won't see all those things in Daniel. We will see them in Revelation. I don't know which one, Pastor, we still had on top. That the Holy Spirit, we did them. Eh? Okay. Eh. That we still had it. But one of the things the Lord laid my hand, and I wrote it down, is that we must not be a vain person like he saw. You know, you can even have a vain attitude towards the world. And what do I mean by vain attitude? So when certain things, you know, I said that the way God communicates is, you know, what, we cannot say you love the Lord if you don't love his purpose. You don't love his, telling you about his times and his season. He's telling you about things he's doing, things he wants to do on earth, and then you are not interested. And you feel could come, could come, you know, like I told you, and you're not telling him that you love me. How, where is the love? Part of the love is that you are also sharing in the burdens of the Lord. How many of you, if somebody says he loves you and you are going through certain things and the person is not showing that he's with you in the things you are going through, does the person really love you? Yeah. So it's the same thing. Part of our love for the Lord is as the Lord is um, he's sharing his burdens, his burden for the church, his burden for the world, his times, understanding of his times and seasons, the things that the Lord wants to... You know, when you love somebody, for those of you that are, that are cutting, you know, when you're doing your cup, one of the things you do is that you will share your plans. Okay, these are my plans, these are my visions. In 10 years, I want to be a daddy Jew, and you'll be the mommy Jew, you know. You will share the burdens, I mean. Part of the love is that when the person is sharing those things, you... You pay attention. Not just only pay attention. You also share in that vision. How many of you agree with me? So you, 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 you maybe are a woman. You are sharing your career plans with your husband. Your husband is doing as if every time you're sharing it with him, he's sleeping. Are you not going to be angry? Kilo day? About the Lord, love me. Or are interested in me? You know, you, say, you don't have you don't have my interest at heart, which is a, an indication that you don't love me. So imagine the Lord sharing the burdens of His heart with us. The things he's doing currently, you know, the things he's doing, it's not, that's what it means about understanding time. That's it. The things the Lord is doing, making us to understand, sharing his heart, sharing his purpose, his visions, the things he wants to do, his ultimate plans. You know, like your, your boyfriend or your fiance or your fiance is sharing his ultimate plans. And you know, they want to be the biggest exporter of uh, tobacco or kinika <laughs> or something, you know. No, no, no. I know. I, no, no, let, no, let me use tobacco of cocoa or something, you know, and all that. And he's sharing the big plans, and then he's sharing, say, eh, okay, no problem. Eh, give me 2K for my head. I want to weave. Okay. How do you feel? You feel like, is this person a serious person? And you don't understand what I'm trying to say? You even, if you're, even if you want the 2K, at least go to your coffin, we are interested. We are interested. We are interested. I'm just trying to make us see it. So in this season, I believe the Lord, there are certain things that the Lord will be sharing with us that are beyond uh, the things that we can easily relate with that touches us, that touches our natural. But it's also still part of God's love, sharing those things with us, making us to understand his time and his season, his vision. His ultimate vision, his ultimate plans, his purposes, make unveiling things about himself to us. And so we must not be a vain person like Esau. That will say, what does that, does this one bring? Uh, you know, when they, were, when they were talking about, you know, it's just, uh, inheritance, you know, come, 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 buy, 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 buy. What I need, na, 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 na. How does uh, seven C, seven C, the trumpet, angel, one, then Daniel, beastie, for the one is gold, the hair, look at me, bad the clay, bad the gold, bad the brass. How does that one concern me? Some of us could have that kind of vehement. No, you may not say it out, but you know your attitude when those words are coming, you just switch off. Don't, I want to tell you, the Lord told me this, this morning, I wrote it down. You don't be a vain person like Esau. Who for the muscle of bread did what? Traded away. It's bad, right? These are your bad rights. These things that are being communicated are part of your inheritance which God has ordained for us to understand and to come into. So these are things that angels desire. 
And then this and this and this and this and angels desire to look into. In fact, there are people that they were given the envelope to go and deliver the message, but they're not allowed to look at the content of the message. Now you that they are delivering it to. Hey, what look at here? Show one show. Show it to touch your husband. Show mu akawa. Show mu shewa. Show mu wawa. Show we have family issues. Stand in the family way. Show by me solve way. Show mu mawa. Show mu what way. Show mu kini kawa. Show mu future way. Show mu clarity on the entire matter. Show. The hacks all of those things. Hey. Hey. Say we will not be vain like Esau. So. Like so. so in this season when they will be, they might be speaking some things that are beyond our natural comprehension, beyond things that touch us in the natural. Our attitude still to those things must be an attitude of reverence, opening our hearts, paying attention, and receiving those things what with all of our hearts. Say with all of our hearts. So those things are said and you don't understand, go back, listen to them, read them, read those scriptures, which I was reading one of the transcripts. You know, sometimes you can't, I don't have time to, 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 um, to listen to a three-hour message, but reading the transcripts, within one hour, within 30 minutes, you can finish a transcript and that refreshes your mind. Reading the transcripts, going back to the transcripts, going back to the summaries of those, or sometimes even just going through some of those excerpts that they bring. You know, just to just look okay, at what they say about this. Okay, this King Tenos, Daniel, can he, it's only okay, this Daniel, can he, is the same revelation. Hey, is it the same thing? Let me even look at it. And not just throw those things away. Just say, hey, well, look, I'm a bad beast. I'm a beast, I'm a beast, I'm a beast. I'm a beast. I'm a beast. Oh, God, deal with this nature. I want you to deal with this nature. Nature, you can't deal with How does that one deal with nature? How does that one? May the Lord help us. Amen. I want us to rise up on our feet this evening. I just want us to ask for grace. If you need to repent, ask for repentance. And just say, God, I truly want to love you. I truly want to love you. I want to love your word. I want to have all of these attitudes towards your word. All of this disposition, attitudes, paying attention, hunger, attention, avoiding distractions, loving your word. Making your praise glorious. Lord, loving you, loving your word, having hearing ears that can receive your word. Lord, help me. Father, strengthen me. Strengthen me. Help me. Help me. Help me. He said, hearing here and seeing eyes that you, Lord, made them both. Lord, grant me hearing that. Help me. Grant me grace to pay attention to your word. Grant me grace to incline. My ears to your sayings. Grant me grace to focus. Help me, grant me grace to be a woman that trembles at your word. That trembles at your word. The Lord in this period, in this conference period, Father, grant me grace to pay attention to your word. To pay attention, not to be distracted. Lord Jesus, help me. Father, strengthen me. Strengthen me. Strengthen me. Strengthen me, help me, help my heart to be steadfast. Help my heart to be steadfast. Help my heart to be steadfast in this period. Help me, Jesus. Father, grant me grace that I repent of seasons, of times where I have not paid so much attention to your word, where I have not revered your word, where I have not honored your word. Where I have not paid attention, I've allowed things to distract me. Where I've allowed issues of life to get at me and to distract me from listening with all attention to your word. Lord, have mercy upon me. Have mercy. Father, forgive me of times when I've been familiar with your word. Where I've been familiar with your word. Lord, have mercy. Father, help me. Help me to make adjustments. Lord, help me to make adjustments. Have necessary adjustments. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this word. Thank you, Father. Because you are bringing us, you are harming us with the right attitude so that we can be blessed. Thank you for shining this light upon us as a people. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, you are free. Pastor Frank. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we give thanks to God? Can we just lift up our hands and give thanks to the Lord? Jesus, we give you thanks. We thank you for bringing instructions to us. 
We thank you, Lord Jesus. And we give thanks to Jesus. Let's give thanks to Jesus. That tongue said that I'm the one speaking to you. Can we just give thanks to him? He's the one that uses mommy to speak to us tonight. Can we just give him thanks? Just give the Lord thanks. Thank him for not leaving us to slip away, you know, from those details. Thank him for bringing light around those areas to help us to make adjustments. It's just his mercy. We give you thanks, Jesus. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for helping us to see the place of your word. Thank you, Lord, for, 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 for instructing us to pay attention to our attitudes toward the word. Thank you, Lord, for instructing us not to take light on, no, to prayers. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to see the place of worship in you. I'm giving you praise. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We receive this instruction with the whole of our heart. We receive it with the whole of our heart. We receive grace. We receive grace. We make adjustment in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. And we appreciate mommy for blessing us tonight. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you for um, that supply. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's have our seat briefly. It's a major supply. These are little, little things that makes us lose out in things of the spirit. Amen. Sometimes things that you think they don't really matter, they are the ones that um, not allow us to move forward. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that the Lord is helping us to see these areas so that we will not keep losing, you know, out and missing out in the spirit. It's the Lord. Amen. And we give him all the praise. We receive it with the whole of our heart. Amen. Let's quickly pass the offering basket um, as we drop our offering. Okay. Um, the meeting continues tomorrow by 5.30. If you didn't forget, We'll all be here to pray. Amen. And then, you know, probably there will be teaching also. Praise the Lord. <laughs> We're not tired of teaching. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Um, our meeting in UI, the outreach in UI is coming up on Friday. Um, we shouldn't forget. Five um, by five, the meeting is starting. And uh, um, everyone will be involved in departments. You know, if you don't leave it for you, a student alone, amen. All departments will be involved. Thank you. Yeah, all departments will be involved. Um, uh, every department. So, department heads, please let's begin to make arrangements towards that, amen. And we encourage us to come early. You know, those that the venue we are using is not our venue, so we have to put a whole lot of things in place. We need to do decoration, we need to put a banner in place, we need to do a lot of things. So, don't be coming by that five. You are not the guest minister, please. Don't come by five. If you come by five, you are wrong. So, be there early, you know, so that a lot of things will be in place. By 2 p.m., we will already be there putting things in place. Amen. Okay, and then um, the outreach is not for undergraduate alone. The theme is the glorious church and it's not only undergraduate, God wants to make glorious. So, do we have master students in the house in UI? Can you wave your hand to Jesus? We are doing master, we are plenty. Wave your hand. I'm not, okay, let's stand up. <laughs> stand up, amen. It's a blessing now. Many people, can we appreciate them please? Hallelujah. We have a lot of master students in the house. It's our meeting, okay? As far as you are a UI student, master's, PhD, it's all our meeting. So let's make sure that we are fully involved. You can have your seat. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And our coppers too. We want us to be there also. Amen. We know you have graduated. You are a copper. You know, there's a way we see meeting that's just for students. Amen. We shouldn't read meetings like that. Sometimes what you don't expect happen in meetings like that. So, 
It's for us. Coppers in the house, we also want us to be there. Let's invite other coppers. It's an outreach, actually. Invite your colleagues, you know, that are also coppers, you know, serving. Invite them to come for the meeting, okay? Let's all be involved in the um, publicity. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Can we rise as we close the meeting? Image and Glory Conference is drawing closer. We want to encourage us to, you know, be uh, committed to our seed towards the meeting. Uh, departmental heads, please, let's, you know, closely re um, relay the information to our unit members, okay? Let's closely do that. You can ask them questions closely, how they have been responding to, to their commitment to the conference. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And we share the grace in one accord, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.